Hello, my name is Marta Białecka Piku, and I work at the Institute of Psychology here at the Jagiellonian University in Krakow. And I am really appreciating inviting me as a developmental psychologist uh, to tell you what do infants know about other people's minds, and hopefully, uh, what is the nature of implicit theory of mind. Uh, so, as a developmental psychologist, probably as you think about this, I will tell you about children who are thinking about our minds uh, and the question would be how they think, well, where is the first moment when they start to think about the mind and uh, how we can measure it with uh, scientific methods, let's say. But not starting from the scientific method, I would say that let me start with the story about the two-year-old Johnny. Johnny was alone in his room, uh, writing on the wallpaper, such a wonderful painting, on the wallpaper. And at that moment, his mom was calling him from the kitchen. He went to the kitchen and, and mom, looking at him, asked him, uh, Johnny, what you have been doing in your room alone? And mom started to go to the room. And this two and a half year old Johnny, uh, going after her and saying to her, Mom, but remember you left me. And this short story, I hopefully show you that this two and a half year John thinks about mother's thinking, intends uh, what, thinks about her intention, of course, and probably also about what he, she will find in the room, and that even I will try to convince you, he uh, probably thinks about uh, not obeying this rule and then about uh, trying to manipulate his state of mind, not to uh, punish him and not to be angry at him because remember, mama, you love me. So uh, the plan of my talk I, is as follows. Uh, in the first part, I will show you uh, some research on so-called explicit theory of mind. Theory of mind that we can uh, measure with verbal tests, with histories that we show to children, three, four, five year olds, older, a bit children than infants. Then I say a few words about implicit theory of mind, so theory of mind that we measure with non-verbal methods. And I hope uh, this would be the part of talk most interested because also connected with the recent research. And in the last part, uh, uh, I try to show you um, our research in our laboratory here in Krakow, also in other laboratories uh, in Europe, let's say. And uh, showing this research, I will try to convince you that uh, children develop this theory of mind for a special reason. And this is no point to have some ability when you don't have to use it. And I show you that they use it always in communicative situation, communicating with others. So the story from the beginning would be important. Let's start with the definition, what is theory of mind? The audience, I, I shouldn't maybe uh, do this, but it is important for everybody to remember that the first person who proposed the definition was primatologist, uh, Primark and Woodruff in uh, 1978. They proposed that uh, chimpanzees have theory of mind because they have ability to impute unobservable mental states, such as beliefs, uh, to oneself and to others in order to explain and predict behavior. So uh, this is naive, but theory, it's used like a theory because it's to explain and predict. And uh, it has also some unobservable uh, constructs or nations or concepts like belief. What is belief? Nobody's seen it. So this is why it's called theory of mind. Some researchers said that it is metaphor rather than the real, uh, the real term used. We measure it with children with so-called false belief tests and this is a story <laughs> that we show to the three, five, uh, three, four, five year olds 
always is a story like this. It could be with puppets, with video, but the story is always the same, the scenery is always the same. There are two girls, they were reading a book, uh, and then one girl is Kate, the blonde, and the second is Betty, dark-haired, and they read a book and then put the book to the green box. Uh, then they left the scene and Kate came back, uh, take the book, uh, and then after a while he put the book to the yellow box uh, and went to the kitchen. Now uh, Betty come back, comes back and the question we asked to a child was where will she look for the book? So as you see this is the most important moment of this task. The main elements of each false belief test, it doesn't matter if it's puppet show, it's story or it's video, it's always that there are human agents, it's a social situation, here Kenneth and Betty, there is an important focal object, here this object is a book, there are always two places, two occluders, two boxes, cupboards, uh, like green and yellow cupboards in the story I show you, and there is an important uh, first phase of this story. At the beginning of the story, we are uh, convinced that uh, there is a phase called belief induction, that the child who is listening to a story uh, has the idea that the dolls has the belief that the book is in the green box. And then, in this unexpected transfer, when one doll is out of the scene, the main change of the test, and then this, this false belief questions where will, in this example, Betty look for the book. The results, results of this uh, research, 30 years of research, it is from 18 till now, it is that three-year-olds fail this test, but five-year-olds pass. When I do this research in preschools, even five-year-olds uh, was surprised with so easy question, was a bit funny for them, why are you asking something obvious? And with the same, um, with the same, the same situation for, from three-year-olds is too difficult. The question is why, from developmental point of view, why is so a big difference between three and five-year-olds or four-year-olds? Uh, the, the question why was, was answered for 30 years by many psychologists, by many theories, and uh, I would say that um, these many theories could be shown as a two main approaches. One is constructivistic approach, when, uh, when um, researchers said that before the age of four, children don't understand the idea of belief, the concept of belief. They really have the conceptual deficit. With language, with experience, they understand this social situation, and this is why they uh, pass the false belief test at the age of four. And there is a second approach uh, that would be called nativistic one, uh, that um, really children have the core knowledge about the belief. They know what is the belief, but they can't do this test because they have some troubles with memory and don't remember the story. They have some trouble with attention. They don't pay attention to the main moments and that is, they, that is why they answer wrongly. Or the problems with uh, control, uh, inhibition and so on. So uh, this nativistic approach uh, was very difficult because, uh, you know, <laughs> this is <laughs> We can say that everything is inborn and innate, but, uh, but uh, many psychologists, developmental psychologists, uh, believe that it is important because they can find uh, very easy that it is um, much earlier than it should be from this constructivistic point of view. And this nativistic approach on the research on explicit theory of mind was, uh, was um, let's say uh, that there was a hint in the research that was very important in the 1940, 1994, uh, because uh, 
it was something that helped this nativistic approach. I will show you what it what helps. This hint was uh, um, observed, really observed, by Clemens and Parner in 1994. And they uh, observing children during the false belief test, and they found that children who answer wrongly, these three-year-olds, young children, before they answer, they look at the right place. So it was something interesting. Maybe they understand, but we don't know how to measure it, yes? Uh, and uh, it uh, happens that this idea was connected with the uh, experimental uh, conditions used with younger children, with infants and toddlers, by René Baller-John, who uh, said that why not to use this experimental paradigm, paradigm used with younger children, infants, this violation of expectation paradigm, and test the theory of mind in this paradigm. In this paradigm, we always uh, produce uh, such a situation that uh, a child is familiarized with one situation, is habituation trials, and then we have a group with consistent uh, condition, the same condition uh, as in familiarization trials, and the second condition is inconsistent, something changed. And uh, the as assumption is that if the child sees the difference and reacts for a longer time, we say, oh, child was surprised, it was unexpected to, to, to the situation, and probably he knows something in the situation. So, by Lerjon and his group uh, proposed a test, false belief test, uh, almost the same as the one I show you, on so called implicit theory of mind. Here, the child was sitting on the mother's lap and looking at the experimenter, and uh, who puts the melon in the green box a few times in familiarization trials. Then there was, there was in, during the next phase, there was a screen here, and uh, the uh, experimenter didn't see the melon moving from the green to the yellow, as in the unexpected transfer test. And the two conditions are uh, so, one condition when the, uh, when the experimenter looks for the melon in the green, so like in a true belief situation, and uh, the second condition when the experimenter lo looks in the unexpected condition in the yellow box. It turned out in this experiment that children look much longer when the experimenter looks for the melon for the melon in the yellow box. So when it was unexpected, it's something new for them. And of course, uh, Onishian by Lerjon said that 15 months old, because children was very young, uh, really understand false beliefs because it was something unexpected for them that this experimenter who didn't see the transfer looks in the yellow box. He shouldn't, he should look in the uh, green box, yes? So this is so-called the rich explanation of the situation because other researchers would say that, for instance, Joseph Perner would say that there is no need to say that children understand the beliefs of the experimenter because we can just say that they have just knowledge about the behavioral rules, about the situation, yes? They know that people look for the object where they put it and it is unexpected that they look at the different place, that the experiment look at the different place. So uh, maybe I just, uh, I could stop the, the place and say, no, there is no implicit theory of mind because we have the easier, more straightforward explanation of the situation. I wouldn't say that because I think uh, that there are many better ways to measure this implicit, spontaneous children knowledge about the mind. And this is the uh, this third part of my talk, showing you these better ways, I hope, to, uh, to measure this implicit and spontaneous young children, young, I mean younger than three-year-olds, children knowledge about the mind. Uh, these uh, examples I will show you that how we measure it, 
it's connected with the idea that these young children develop theory of mind, this implicit theory of mind, uh, because of something. They need theory of mind, especially they need it to understand social situation and all this uh, theory of mind abilities, very early theory of mind abilities, are showing us that they uh, use this, his difficult abilities to understand social situation and also to be understood by other people in the situation. They use it to communicate and cooperate with others and they use it also to share the norms. Uh, in my opinion, the, the best way to understand this is to connect with Tomasello idea of Basuredi idea um, because uh, this point of view is very close to my ideas and I will show you three examples how children, young children, young infants uh, understand the social situation trying to cooperate and communicate with, with others and showing uh, that in his, in his or her uh, behavior showing that uh, they really uh, understand the intentions and belief of an adult. The first uh, film would be from our laboratory. Uh, we tested one-year-old children, as you see on mother's lab, and opposite side uh, there is experimenter. This task is called folder, and uh, this task uh, is created by my colleague uh, Arkadiusz Białek, who uh, found it is interesting that children who ask if children really want to inform uh, adult about the situation unseen by an adult. So it is the same point. Yes, uh, the adult didn't see something, did, did not so, did not uh, see something, and then we ask if the child will inform. So do something to cooperate, to communicate and to make adult know. So really creating knowledge in the adult uh, way. See the film. The camera is behind the child. So Look at the corner, left corner down. This was the important behavior. The child was pointing. We call it informative pointing because the intention was to inform the adult where is the folder, what happens when, he, when she was turning back. The second uh, film I want to show you is from the Warnken and Tomasello group. Uh, this film uh, was showing how uh, 18 months old, in our research was 12 months old, here is 18 months old, want to help the adult in social situation, how she understand the social situation. So uh, we think that the child really wants to help, really knows what is the intention, yes? So really have the theory of mind of the adult because knows the intention in this situation. Uh, he wants to put the book in the cupboard, so how, why not to help with no uh, words, with no asking child to do something, spontaneously child helps uh, in this situation. And the last experiment I want, you, I want to show you was uh, created by uh, Hannes Rakoczy. Uh, and it was experiment uh, not only um, how children understand us as psychological agents, 
but also how the children understand us as um, uh, agents who have norms, rules, abstract rules, rules that, are, that couldn't be um, in, in the previous experiment, we could say that child is imitating, that it is just common ground, social situation, he knows such situation. But in this experiment, I think, we couldn't say this because this is an abstract rule of the game showing to a child, and we will see what the child will do with these rules. So, uh, during the first phase of the experiment, uh, uh, the child was taught what was um, what is this uh, game, the game called Daxing. Theo? Ja. Jetzt zeige ich dir mal ein Spiel, ja? Ja. Das Spiel, das heißt Dachsen. Und ich zeige dir mal, wie Dachsen geht, ja? Ja. Schau mal. Ich werde jetzt Dachsen. Guck mal, so wie Dachsen. Ich Dachse! Oh, jetzt habe ich gedachst. Toll! Of course, it, will, uh, it were a few trials. What is Dachsing? During the next phase, uh, the child was so what is not daxing. So geht doch gar nicht daxen. So it was not daxing. The important on the scene was also the fact that opposite side of the child was a puppet, a small puppet. Now, during the last phase, the test phase, uh, this puppet was, was trying to join the game, do the daxing. And we will see what the puppet will do, and then we will see what the child will do after learning what is daxing. Oh, sorry. This is again this. Jetzt werde ich dachsen. Ich dachse. Jetzt dachse ich. Ich dachse. Wieso du so geht ganz dachsen? Das ist gut, das mal runter. Warte mal, so geht kein Sachsen. So geht kein Sachsen. Ah. So geht kein Sachsen. Erst musst du das nehmen und das hier. Bitte schön. Das muss ich hier nehmen. Ah, jetzt werde ich dachsen. Ich dachse. Jetzt dachse ich. Ich dachse. So geht das nicht. Nein, so geht es nicht. So geht es nicht. So geht das gar nicht. So geht das nicht. So geht das nicht. So geht das nicht. Nein, so geht das nicht. Dann musst du erst das hier nehmen. Hier. Bitte. Dank. Bitte. Das da musst du nehmen, hier. Doch, und dann das hier. Das hier musst du nehmen. Das hier. Ja? So, as you see, uh, a child was spontaneously protesting, actively wants the wrongdoer to do the right thing, yes? Uh, and uh, that is why we say that uh, he really understand what he's doing, not only understand the rule, but want other people, this puppet, to obey the rule, to do what is right in this situation, not what is wrong in this situation. So, so to sum up, I would say that, um, that pointing gesture 
as a way to share knowledge could be an example of the situation when we can show that children really understand uh, this uh, communicative situation and really understand intentions of other people and want other people to share knowledge with them. They are also helping so helping is a tool to share intention. And uh, in that third example, we saw that active and spontaneous protest, when rules are not observed, are not obeying, is an expression of normative stance. So ch children abstract the rule, want other people, wrongdoer, to obey the rules. So for a conclusion, I would say that children younger than three year olds think about mental states, intentions, beliefs, probably uh, desires of other people, and even they can think about social norms while communicating with others. And this is the important point, communicating with others, because in this situation we can observe such a behavior. Thank you very much. for this comment because of course it is implicit and explicit uh, it is uh, a difference to understand the intention especially in communicative situation communicative intention is also something different than the intention as intention so of course but uh, but I think uh, from developmental point of view this is an interesting question what is on the base what was the first uh, the first the ontogenetic zero of this ability developed later on intention desires then we go to the beliefs probably understanding of course we can also see this from the point of view of purpose mm -hmm. because the very definition of uh, theorem is about imputing mm -hmm. so there is no necessary reason for that addition to be there. Mm -hmm. And you can view those mm, behaviors. I mean, um, it seems that the, the child understands the purpose, mm -hmm. but also what the lab and wants to, and also, but also in trust. So it also, it, it learns in trust, and, and those beliefs, there are no rules. But mm -hmm. it's not the wrong door. Mm -hmm. It's just that the, the child in trusting the teacher, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, Beliefs that there is a common purpose mm -hmm. and there is a, the right way, not in the moral sense, but in the ethical sense. So, so if she, if he, or he, or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, we transform the way to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, beliefs that it is, it is uh, it, it, to achieve this purpose. I mean, I, I don't think that the judge is passing a moral judgment. Mm -hmm. it's just, and, and those films show that if you, and it doesn't need to understand or even impute the mental content. Mm -hmm. The, the, the child might only understand 
uh, when you test the number of desire, uh, an understanding of understanding, so some sort of theory of mind. Mm -hmm. But it also might be just a theory of space, if you like, in, in the sense that uh, the child learns dynamically uh, or explicitly is being taught. Mm -hmm. And then uh, believes that um, it is good for us to achieve the purposes um, that we want to achieve, that it is a common mm -hmm. thing. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for that comment, but uh, uh, we can also say that in this situation the child... So, probably when we change a bit this experiment, when there is no this first experimenter, because maybe he's just doing this, you suggest, because of the adult sitting there. So maybe with no the first adult who was teaching him what, what to do, there would be a different uh, reaction. You would agree with this? <laughs> see, it's, um, it, it's there, it does, do those experiments actually mm -hmm. show um, that intention as such? Intention as such. Mm -hmm. uh, because that, that is just, it's, mm -hmm. the, the whole thing is designed from the point of view of mm -hmm. intention, but that's, that's the experiment or, um, or experiments or the mm -hmm. research actually mm -hmm. show that intention is something that can be, if you like, observed. Mm -hmm. from the infant behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, because that might be just uh, like a you know, common understanding of the rules of um, achieving purpose. Yeah. It's common ground, yes. It's like in common yeah. context and, and suggesting. And it's the purpose of the child is trust the teaching to be mm -hmm. there for us. And it, that, that's also a, a, an understood strategy. Mm -hmm. You trust your protectors, whatever parents, uh, to give you things that for the group for the species to, to carry on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you.